one. Hey, praise the Lord, guys. Evangelist Rob here of Rob Woods Ministries. I have one of the cutting edge generals on the earth, Pastor Dana Coverstone. Now he just says, come on, Rob, keep me humble. Don't puff me up. My head will explode. But anyway, God's using this man in a powerful, powerful venture, a powerful way. He's going to share the latest dream. By the way, this is Pastor Daner Coverstone from Kentucky. And he started having dreams within a year ago, like a modern day Jonah. So Dana, what's the name of the latest dream? Just share it. Praise the Lord. You've got the sure. floor. The Lord bless you. Amen. Well, thanks for letting me be on your show. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm just calling this dream the flaming, flaming spear dream. Um, and here's what it was. I saw a globe sitting on a stand. No hand touched it or moved it. It just began to move. And it was accelerating as it span, spun so hard and it began to wobble on the stand. And then I saw two male runners that were like on a running track. It was, it was like a mile, a couple miles long. And there was a wall 20 feet high between the runners. So they couldn't see each other. Each of these runners had a spear with a fire like torch on the end of it, burning very bright and flame shot up from it. It was just a sharp piece of metal that was on fire on the end. One of these runners was wearing a multicolored outfit, track, a track suit like you see in the Olympics. He was stretching, bouncing, preparing to run. The other guy was wearing a solid white outfit, but was not moving at all. He was standing in place, almost not breathing like a mannequin. And then a man suddenly appeared on that wall looking down at these two runners. Uh, and he was wearing a very expensive jacket. Uh, he was wearing runner shorts and runner shoes. And he carried a starter's pistol in his hand. And he said to the, the runner in white that was motionless, he said, you must pace yourself and win. And at this, the runner simply nodded, his, nodded at the guy and cracked his neck. And then the man in the colorful runner's outfit, he wasn't even addressed at all. But when the man up on the wall said, to your mark, when he said that, the runner wearing the, that multicolored outfit, he took a running start and he threw that spear into the air, into the atmosphere. It went, went way up in the atmosphere. And, and then he, he got down in the blocks and got ready to run. The motionless man just moved into position, but he didn't get down in the blocks, like the runner's blocks I'm talking about. He just kind of stood there. He leaned down and he tapped the end of the spear into the ground. And then he spit on that flame. And when he spit on it, the, it just exploded. He, his hair caught on fire. Uh, but he wasn't hurt. It was like a burning bush thing. And then the man up above called ready. And then he fired the pistol and the two men took off. Now the, the one, the multicolored outfit guy, he was running as quick and fast as he could. And the man who was now on fire was just jogging. His hair had gotten on fire. His shirt was on fire now, but because the wall between them, no man could see each other. And then I saw this crimson red calendar. It had crisp white letters. It had a black thick outline of letters. And I saw May, 2021, and I saw two hands like this, and they were, it, was roll, it was just unlo, unrolling this calendar. And I saw June, July, August, and September. And these hands were, were, were covered in blood. And as he's, as he's unrolling this uh, calendar, May, it's just like connected, May, June, July, August, September. But now he's, he's, got the, he's got the May in his hands, but September is touching the ground. And then the scene changed to a map of Europe. It went through Russia, China, down the Middle East, the Mediterranean, and I saw Israel. Israel was emphasized on this map. I saw leaders in Russia, China, and I'm talking modern-day leaders, Russia, China, Israel, Western Europe, and they had these high-powered binoculars, and they were watching the United States, and they were telling individuals to write down everything that they were seeing. They were getting excited. They were pumping their fists. Uh, they were patting each other on the back, and they were waving their nation's flags feverishly. And then I saw military leadership. American military leadership in these rooms and the leaders were whispering in their ears and then they would get on these phones and whisper back and, and just back and forth and I could see the blood dripping down the calendar from the hands that were holding it and then I saw fires all over America I saw cities in lockdown uh, no violence or anything I just saw lockdown I saw cities, I fought, cities on fire flags were at half mass and, and all over the place. And I saw they began to fade as they were waving in the wind. They just suddenly turned into smoke and faded away. And there were many American military groups on the ground. They were directing traffic. And there was a close, they were keeping a close watch on the streets. Then, I, then it flashed back to the colorful runner. And he was running as hard as he possibly could. And he had his hand on the wall the entire time. So as he's running, his hand is touching the wall. 
And he's saying very loudly, wake them up, wake them up, wake them up, wake them up. And he kept his eye on the spear. He kept looking up, but as he's running, he's saying, wake them up, wake them up, wake, wake them up. And he's watching that spear that's still in the air. And the spear is aiming towards something. And the runner in white was now a dingy gray. The white was gone. And the, it was, the white was gone completely from his jersey. His hand, his hand was also on the wall, but it was leaving a trail of fire. So this trail of fire followed him as he ran. Now, the colorful runner was, 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 was sweaty. He was worn out. Several times it looked like he was going to fall on the ground and trip. But he recovered and he kept going. But he had great difficulty breathing. And the jogging runner was now smirking, taking his time. Uh, but now he is fully engulfed. He's in fl fully engulfed in fire, spreading all over him. And now his gray jersey went from white to gray is now just flaming red. And he suddenly picks up his spear and he throws it over the wall. And it flew after that runner that was on that side. And then he started running as fast as he possibly could, trying to make up distance. And the colorful runner looked back. And when he saw that spear, he sped up. But he kept his spear on the, on the, he kept his eye on the spear that he'd thrown himself. That was that had the fire on it, and uh, and it was headed towards this building. And this building seemed to be filled with people who were on their knees and they were praying loudly. Both runners kept moving, and you got one spilling fire out along the wall, and the other is now screaming as loud as he can. The colorful runner is now screaming, "Wake up, wake up!" And I mean, he's screaming as loud as he can. Scene flashback again to I saw American generals in a facility, obviously underground. And there were many phone calls, and these phone calls were coming in on rotary phones. And for those that don't know, a rotary phone, you had to put your finger in the hole and then turn it like this. You, you remember rotary phones. And the generals were answering them, and they were telling others to position numbers on a very large map of both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. And it was, a, it was a state of panic in this room. People were frantic, running back and forth, hollering this, hollering that, move this number, move that, and they were moving those numbers on those maps. And then I saw world leaders modern, current day world leaders uh, in Europe, Russia, and Israel. And they were talking with each other with great passion and concern on their faces. And they kept saying this, it might be our time. It might be our time. It kept being spoken by the leaders as they watched those fires. They were looking at America and they kept saying it might be our time as they saw these fires burning. And then the spear thrown by that first runner hit the building. And it, was, it exploded into this bright white light. And it streamed down over the entire country. So when it hit this building, it caused a, it caused this explosion over. It covered the entire it, the entire nation. It was this powerful. This image was powerful to me because it just it got my heart. It looked like napalm. And if you remember the the bombings of Vietnam and those those missiles would roll and that white phosphorus napalm would come out. It looked like that. And this when this when this thing blew up, it put out some of the fires in some of those cities. It also lessened some of those fires, but there were some places that had no impact at all. And then I could see in the explosion, it also thrown people. So the explosion happened, it threw fire out, but it also threw people. And those people had fire extinguishers and brooms, and they were patting out the fire, and they were screaming. They were screaming at the top of their lungs, wake up, stay awake, there's not much time. Wake up, stay awake, there's not much time. Wake up, stay awake, there's not much time. And then that colorful runner, I saw him. He sat down, he leaned against the wall. He just crossed that finish line, just on the other side. And you could tell he was weak and weary and he was exhausted. And he took a deep breath. Uh, I also saw the, 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 the other runner was laying in a, just in a pile of smoke and ash. He had made the, he also got across the, the, the finish line, but he wasn't breathing. He wasn't moving. He was just laying there. And then the man that I see in my dreams, he said, warn them. There's not much time left, and it will never be easy again. He said, if you're not braced now, you won't make it. If you're not rooted, you'll be pulled up, and the fire will never go out. Look for me, endure, and endure until I come. And then I saw every one of those international leaders at the very end of this dream, and those American generals, they all put their phones down at the very same, same time in sync. And in unison, they all said, it's time. Hmm. And then they all sat down at their desks and they put their heads in their hands. and They began to weep. And Rob, I believe the real meaning of this is the focus on the one that was running in the multicolored outfit. That, was, that, that that was the watchmen, the pastors, the prophets, the apostles, the people, the teachers who right now are trying to get the message out that Jesus is coming. We're trying to wake the church up. This was the watchmen, the people who are hearing God's voice, who's saying, go, 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 wake them up, wake them up, wake them up. 
Sheree today, when we did the dream, she has shared, you know, she's been interpreting dreams for me. And she's noticed that most of the dreams I've had have been prayer initiatives. Pray for the country. Pray for the country. But this one, I feel, was just God's way of saying, church, I'm coming soon. There's not much time. You got to wake up. You got to stay awake. You got to get busy. You got to work. So that this message is for the watchmen. This message is for the pastors. This message is for those believers that are know, who have heard in their hearts that he's coming back. We don't have time. Paul said, work while it's yet day. And you and I know, brother, that the, the sun is setting. And that window of opportunity to get the gospel out, to preach, to teach, to live, to love people for Jesus, it, it's closing. And so I believe that this dream, it was another warning dream to the church. Wake up, stay awake. And I'll tell you, they were screaming it. They were screaming, wake up, stay awake, wake up, stay awake. And it just, that, that's the scene that got my attention, got my mind. Um, the other runner, I think, is just the world that's going haphazard, running like crazy, culture, government, all those things that are just out of control. But the good news is there's people that are praying. There's a message to be given. And God's going God's gonna to justify it all in the end. But we need to be faithful to do what God's called us to do. So as fellow watchmen, we got to keep preach. We got to keep teaching Jesus, preach Jesus. We got to keep the, the, the church world has got to wake up and stay awake. My God. Now, Dana, I want you to listen to me. You didn't know this. I want you, I'm going to just do this screen a little higher. You see that clock on the wall, Pastor? What time is that clock? Yes. Say? I had changed it's almost the clock. Tonight. I ch man, I feel the Holy Ghost, brother. Mm -hmm. The Lord told me to change the clocks in my house last week to 1159 and leave them there. I did another show, Pastor, where I held the big round clock in front of my face. I'll send it to you if you don't mind. And the show is uh, yeah. titled, It's 1159 at Night. A different clock than this one. I manually put the clock to 1159 and I shared exactly where at work well work while it's day where night cometh where no now listen to me okay. the bible says at the midnight hour the door was shut and no one five right. five wise and foolish virgins now listen to me guys it said when they all slept and slumbered all ten slept, but only five had enough oil now let right. me just wing this very quickly pastor the man in white in the dream was eli eli cracked his neck Eli was a seer prophet. The Bible says when he was 98, his eyes begin to grow so dim he can no longer hardly see. It's not unusual for a man almost 100 to lose his eyesight, but he yeah. started losing the seer anointing in his eyes. Mm -hmm. He couldn't see. Hophni and Phinehas were running amok at the gate. He yeah. fell back. He became obese because he came lethargic backslidden and lukewarm and cold of heart, and he cracked the back of his neck. Eli didn't finish like he was supposed to start. Samson didn't yeah. finish like he was supposed to start. Paul said, you have need of endurance. So yes. you may finish the race. He said, I finished. I fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. Now, the Bible yeah. generally says the race is not to the swift, but to the shore. But now listen. <laughs> This right. is what I get out of this. Back in ancient Roman days, they would, they, would, uh, they would compete in the arenas in the Olympics. And I want to read to you Revelations 2.17. Who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to him who overcomes. I will give hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except who receives it. Back in those days, in those Olympian Roman times, the white stone would go to the winner. They would give him a white stone. And I believe what the Lord's saying in those dreams is the church at large is at a crossroads. Paul said, awake out of sleep for your salvation is nearer than when you first believed. And God's right. allowing these warnings of judgment, these repercussions to come as birth pains because the contractions are getting closer and closer. Yes. You know, Matthew yes. 24 wasn't a joke. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but when Jesus oh, spoke brother. Matthew 24 at the end of it, he didn't say not or I'm kidding or I was only joking. 
When you hear of wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, now what that means is simultaneously, when you see more wars taking place daily and more earthquakes taking place simultaneously, you know it's at the door. Jesus said, you can go say it's going to rain, snow, hell, yada, yada, but you cannot perceive, discern, or interpret the signs of the times. Listen to me, guys. You would have to be twice dead and plucked up by the roots and completely in denial, delusional, or did a delusion. You've got to wake up in this hour. God's trying to yes. wake the church up to say, hey, and listen he to me. This is what's coming. I want my church to do listen the great commission is of the utmost importance and i'm sure dan agrees when i had him yeah. on a month or so ago he shared the message of occupy or yeah. be fully in occupation so pastor what a dream my god in heaven the lord is speaking to you the man with many colors what could be joseph who had a dream where a famine was coming and God told them, store up for the seven years of famine. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to be honest. Some dreams are literal. Some are symbolic. Some are metaphorical. I believe this is a combination of both, where we're seeing these dreams that are spiritual, where the nations, the enemy wants to expedite the book of Revelations, Armageddon, and cause wars so he could end this thing to take people to hell. God wants yes. to expand time and thwart it so more through grace can come into the kingdom. That's right. the heart of God. That's the heart of the Father. He wants to expand and not, no one's going to stop this, guys, when those four horsemen start to ride. I'm just yep. trying to tell you the enemy wants to take people to the lake of fire, but Jesus wants to populate heaven so we can plunder hell. <laughs> Come on, let's go. So, Amen. Pastor, Amen. thank you for sharing this dream. Now, listen, guys, if I did a poor job, it's all good of just giving my two cents. Praise the Lord. But you can go on Pastor Daner's channel on YouTube also and hear this dream. Maybe share it a little longer. Maybe that interpreter. Because, listen, some see in soul a whole, some see in part. We see cloudy. Yep. I get a piece of yarn, she gets a piece, and then we get a whole, the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. So Pastor Daner, we honor you. We love you. Can't wait to have you come back on again. The Lord bless you guys in Jesus. Let me say Amen. this, your two cents was worth it. <laughs> well, Blood. maybe maybe we can get the multiplication where Jesus multiplied five loaves and fishes, fed 5,000. So oh, yeah. we are in a great day of acceleration. Amos said the plowman's going to take the, the reaper. I'm seeing an on-fire, red-hot church. You know, when yep. the dude's throwing the spear, javelin, whatever it is, and it's fire, the fire of God, the impartation is not taught, it's caught. Fire right. caught, right. guys. We've got to be on fire, red-hot. Disciples Absolutely. said, not my heart's burn within us. Acts chapter 2, Absolutely. Pentecost fire. We're just going to believe God for the holy. Jesus has eyes of burning fire. He yep. wants his church to be on fire. So, hey, thanks for chilling with us, guys. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.